Sap, the development team behind our first game, has a few things in common with Sinclair's Strange, whose games I looked at in an earlier video in the series. Both specialize in short, fun retro titles that are easy on the wallet and very authentic, for better or worse. Adventure Bit is a simple game at heart, something that will be a running theme in all today's titles. The player character can jump, attack, and throw certain objects, and it is this simple skill set that must guide the player through four stages with three levels each. The objective in each level varies, but all of the action is confined to a single screen, so you'll only be expected to use what you can see. The game starts off pretty easy, but don't expect it to stay that way. What appear to be difficulty settings on the main menu are actually different sets of levels, six in all. The hand-holding stops at about set 3, and by set 5 the game is actively out to get you. It would be wise to get the hang of the controls as early as possible, as the later levels can get increasingly technical. Now, that's going to be the other recurring theme, controls. Adventure Bit is designed to replicate some of the limitations of those 8-bit computers, and that means your movement might not be as fluid as you'd expect from a modern title. Twitch reflexes won't save you here. Early platformers like this are about moment-to-moment -moment strategy. Get your tactical brain ready, and you'll be good to go. So I mentioned Super Win the Game in passing while discussing Gunmetal Arcadia, another game by the same developer, so let's go just a little bit more in depth here. Our protagonist in this game is the Wayfarer, a man with no past behind him, but a quest in front of him. Track down the Arcadians and figure out how to drive the evil out of the land. Unfortunately, he's not quite equipped for the task. All the Wayfarer can do is jump. He has no means to defend himself and will die immediately if he touches anything harmful. What can I say? Being a hero isn't always easy. Now, stylistically, Super Win the Game is something of a hybrid. It has some technical features that were beyond computers of this era, but under the hood, it's another computer-style exploration platformer. The Wayfarer starts in an open world, and it's up to the player to find clues and power-ups to advance through the story, though the game is pretty generous with its signposting. Difficulty-wise, Super Win the Game starts off pretty casual, but it will show its teeth. The in-game gets very technical, but it's the bonus content where things get cute, requiring the Wayfarer to weave through a screen full of bouncing projectiles or scale a wall of spikes using only narrow blocks that wink out of existence every few seconds. You may have to win the game, but you don't have to 100% it. Remember that. Our last game on display today is an action side-scroller designed to emulate the games of the Amstrad. Black Jewel is another simple-at-heart kind of game. Move left to right through a series of screens, kill monsters when necessary, avoid traps when necessary, recover the titular jewel. As with the protagonist in Adventure Bit, your character is limited to a jump and an attack, but that's all you needed back in the day. Monsters aren't big talkers, but they do understand steel. Now, on paper, Black Jewel is a short game, but as with many titles of the time, it might take you a while to finish. It is not an easy game, and Game Over is just that. There are no checkpoints, no continues. Once your life bar empties out, it's back to the first screen. And this harkens back to an era when finishing even a brief game was a real accomplishment. As with Adventure Bit, the real challenge here is mastering the controls. Barbarians aren't known for being nimble, and Ryan here is no exception. Dodging projectiles requires fast planning and a good understanding of the mechanics. Combined with the rarity of healing items and the aforementioned lack of checkpoints, and you can see that Black Jewel is a game meant for the hardcore nostalgist looking for a bona fide challenge.